<sighs> Hello? Daddy. I know baby daddy. What's going on, my homies, and welcome back to The Ripster. Once again, more movies and entertainment are our reputation. So, Hatchet 3, I know, I'm finally getting to this. And I know it's taken me a while, but uh, here we go. Hatchet 3 was released in 2013, and was this time directed by B.J. McDonald, unlike the first two, who was directed by Adam Green, although Adam Green did write this one. And stars returning star Daniel Harris and, of course, Kane Hodder. And the story continues as Mary Beth Dunstan learns how to end Victor Crowley's voodoo curse while a search and recovery team heads over to Honey Island Swamp to pick up the pieces only to get slaughtered one by one. Yeah, typical slasher film. Typical slasher, typical slasher everything. <laughs> Okay, okay, all jokes aside, or all kidding aside, rants aside, whatever. Let's get on with the positives of Hatchet 3. First and foremost, the direction. Like I said before, unlike the first two, who was directed by Adam Green, who did an excellent job, don't get me wrong, this time was picked up by B.J. McDonald, who gave it sort of an interesting turnaround, where it, what he did with the story, which I'll harp on that later, but I like what he did with this. I like the direction that he went with this. B.J. McDonald, I don't really know much of his work. This is the only film that I've actually seen him do, but I liked what he did in this film. I like the direction that he went. For a third in the trilogy about a mongoloid monster in a swamp, they definitely upped the ante in this, and which also had a lot to do with the direction. And again, I give props to B.J. Because of that, the impact was great. For a third in the trilogy, I felt all of it. I felt the horror. I felt the tenseness. It was perfect for a final in the trilogy. If only. It was very visceral, very gritty. Like I said, I felt the tension all the way. The tenseness all the way. And a lot of that has to do with the story. It was on point. I like the whole idea about this SWAT team coming in after two movies of having just pedestrians like gator hunters and boat tourists come in and then getting picked off by this guy one by one. I like the idea that they up the ante uh, by having this SWAT team come in and try to take care of this. Of course, it doesn't do no good because look who you're trying to fight. It's a legend. It's a ghost. You can't kill what's already dead. If there's one thing we learn in the Friday 13 movies, and these is just that. But I like that whole concept. I like the whole thing, the whole idea about the SWAT team just coming in and trying to mop up everything even though it doesn't really do no good. It just added to it. That's all I'm trying to say. It just added to it. One of the characters I wanted to mention speaking about the SWAT team is Derek Mears, who plays Haas, the head of the SWAT team. That guy knows what's up. That guy knows what he's doing. For many of you horror fans out there, but of course a lot of y'all know that he played Jason Voorhees in the 2009 remake of Friday 13th. So it was interesting to see him in this with Kane Hodder. And I've got to mention the scene without giving too much away, but of course many of you probably have already seen this already, but there was a scene where him and Victor Crowley fought. It was like the old Jason versus the new Jason. And it was awesome. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Even though it didn't last long and we all know who won. But still, it was awesome. And Derek Mears, that guy knows how to act. That guy knows his stuff. He was all around cool. He was all around awesome. I really wish they'd get him in more stuff. And we also get a cameo by Sid Haig. And many of y'all know that he's famous for like House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects. And, of course, a little cameo in Three from Hell. Of course, that was, like, right before he died. He sadly passed away. He's another one of those that uh, we lost. Sadly passed away. I think it was back in October of 2019 or somewhere around there. He was pretty funny in this. He plays a long-distance cousin to Victor Crowley. He's a little bit of a racist in this. So there's some funny moments between him and the cop. And there was just some, some funny moments in between him and this guy, and he couldn't help but laugh. He couldn't help but crack up. I got eyes in the front of my head. Why don't you just offer me some fried chicken and watermelon while you at it? I ain't got no food. It was a joke. You mumble. I can't understand you people. Forget it. What? 
Forget it. Faggot. I ain't no faggot. He was only in it for like five minutes, but he added like the comic tone to it and I thought it was perfect. And the first time I watched this, I, I jumped out of my seat. I was like, wow, he's in this. Dang. That's good that they got him in this for only like, even though it was only five for like five minutes. <laughs> and you also get Caroline Williams, which was a bonus. Many of y'all know her from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, who was the final girl in that film, and I thought she did a pretty good job in Hatchet 3. Kane Hodder <laughs> was great. I'm not going to harp on it too much because I moaned and groaned about it enough from the first two reviews, but he was great. He held nothing back as Victor Crowley. Blood gore factor, <laughs> especially. Oh, awesome. The continuation factor. Okay, if you were to edit these films, just the first three, it would be one giant film. Because these movies, between one and three, literally start split seconds. Split second after the previous one. The first one ended with Mary Beth and that guy on that boat. And then Victor Crowley tries to grab her and pull her up. And then the second one starts right there. And then at the end of the second one, Mary Beth shoots Victor Crowley in the face while he's lying on the floor. And it starts right then and there with Hatchet 3. It's like a continuation. And I love that. Continuity-wise, because I'm such a big fan of continuity, I love it. Which is the whole reason why I like Saw, among other things. The Saw films, they kind of did the same thing minus the introduction of like saw traps and stuff like that but that's the whole reason why i like the saw films too because they pretty much did the same thing continuity wise and i love that me being a fan of continuity i love it now let's get into the mixed as i said before in the hatchet 2 review i wasn't that much of a fan of danielle harris's character i just did not like the way she played that character off especially after knowing who played her in the first one, which I was a big fan of. I liked the girl in the first Hatchet that played Mary Beth. Danielle Harris in Hatchet 3, I thought she did a little bit of a better job. You know, she wasn't in the swamp that much. She was mostly held as a suspect to all the events that happened in the first two. But I thought she did a little bit of a better job in this. Not 100% but a definite improvement over the second one. And here we go with the negatives. Zach Galligan, who plays as the sheriff in this. I didn't really like his performance. I felt like he was kind of playing through the motions. Either that or he's like overreacting. Those two feelings just kept on coming over me whenever he was be on the screen, especially in the first act when he was confronting Mary Beth in the jail cell and talking down to her and crap, and I just couldn't get into his performance. I felt a little bit embarrassed, just a little bit, but I just couldn't get it. I couldn't take the guy, the guy seriously. I mean, yeah, he, he kind of improved later on as the third act started with him being in that swamp and everything going on, but I, I just couldn't get into his character. I just, I don't think he did that good of a job. Hatchet 3 was pretty satisfying. It felt like a solid, what would have been a final chapter to a great trilogy, if only. God. Another video, another story, another day. Sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> Hatchet 3 lived up to its expectations. It wasn't perfect, but it was entertaining. It's a sweet delight. So, Hatchet 3, what was your thoughts on it? Did you like its impact? Did you like the story? Or do you like the others better than this one? Leave me your comment down below and give me your thoughts. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. Like, subscribe, and comment, and share. And I'll see you on the next one, wherever it may be. Peace, the river.